Hello. Thank you very much for tuning in to this YouTube channel. My name's Simon. This is the first part of a series of films on our journey back in the summer of 2019 to London from the Midlands. We will be setting off from a little village called Yelvertoft, travelling along the Grand Union Leicester section through the villages of Creek, underneath the M1 motorway near to Junction 18 and down the Watford Locks, then to a junction called Norton Junction where we turn left and go down the Grand Union main line towards London. Finishing this film in the Weedon Beck area. If you happen to have one of the um, Nicholson's guides to the waterways of the United Kingdom, one needs guidebook number one and to start with at Yelvertoft guidebook number three. Yelvertoft as I say is a small village in the countryside and we will be starting from there going down the canal through Creek So after the first night we will then arrive at Norton Junction where we turn left and follow the Grand Union main line down on our journey towards London finishing this film at Weedon Beck. So sit back, hope you enjoy the film, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe and uh, thank you very much again for watching. Having recently retired, I can do something that I've never done before and that's undertake a journey which will last several weeks, travelling by narrowboat from the Leicester section of the Grand Union Canal down to London. Passing through Crick, one is just about to look at the bridge and on the bridge you can just make out a metal object. That metal object I believe was a gas light. It's just coming up in the picture now. Passing Andy Burnett Narrowboats which is a narrowboat brokerage advertising on the internet I turned around to gaze back at the bridge and the local pub by the canal. Approaching Crick Tunnel I could see that there was a boat about to leave the tunnel so I waited. It's not much fun trying to get into a tunnel and immediately having to pass a boat. It is quite tight One sometimes ends up scraping along the wall so I thought I'd wait.
So I entered the tunnel, but there was another boat coming, so I knew I'd have to pass at least one boat. Looking back now at the boat after I had passed it, towards where I'd come from, and now we're looking towards the other entrance. Interesting plant here, just hanging down from the roof. Don't know what it is. It's appeared in several YouTube videos. And the engine smoking again. I tend to wear a mask in the tunnel, so I don't breathe in the fumes too much. Quite a bit of weed about as well. This is a lovely section of the canal, heading towards the Watford Locks. Over the hedge you can just make out the M1 motorway, and we're going to join a queue of boats, which you can see now, waiting to go down Watford Locks. You have to book in, see one of the lock keepers who's in charge, book in, give your boat details and wait your turn. We were lucky, we were one of the last boats to go down that day. This is the first lock going down the Watford flight. After one single lock, there are then four locks joined together. That is called a staircase. This is looking up one of the lock gates in the staircase. You can see how much taller they are. Watford Locks has side ponds and there's a saying going, if your paddles are painted either red or white, it, you do the red before white and you'll be all right white before red and you wish you were dead so we've just gone through the Watford flight of locks and passing all the boats waiting to go up in the other direction I felt quite sorry for them must have counted about a dozen so they would all have to wait till the following day as the flight was due to close looking at a, a runoff from the canal there water levels are quite good there was a, a thing about water levels during the summer of last year needing to save water this bridge is quite interesting because you can, can contrast the difference between the modern bridge here with the concrete beams and then the older bridge which is steel girders with brick archers holding up the track bed. Engine's still pouring out a load of smoke. Hope it won't do anything to damage the global warming. Another lovely section of the canal. We passed two marinas now, one on the left and another one that will be coming up shortly on the right. Quite a bit of nature around. Not sure if it's a hare or a rabbit, but uh, you don't often see them out during the day. So this is the second marina now we're about to pass on the right hand side. We moored for the night just before Norton Junction. On our second day's travel, we leave Norton Junction and we're going to turn left. Looking astern of the boat, backwards, one can make out the Leicester section of the Grand Union going off on the right and to the left was the Grand Union main line going towards Bronson. Now approaching the top of the locks called Long Buckby Locks or Buckby Lock Flight. Just waiting for the 
couple of boats to leave the lock before we can enter the first lock where we'll be descending the locks. Descending the top lock at Buckby. We were very fortunate to have uh, met up with a couple on a higher boat so we shared the locks with them throughout the flight. Beautiful gardens of the house on the right hand side. Absolutely stunning. What a lovely location. Bit of repair work going out on on that bridge. There you can just see the couple on their boat that we were sharing the locks with. And there's a little uh, shop here, not actually been in it. My wife visited it last year. Lock number eight, Grand Union Canal, at the Buckley Flight. Wonder why these people need a cannon at the bottom of their garden, though. And we're only five miles from Braunston. It was reasonably busy that flight that day. Here you can see us waiting for the next lock. Just leaving the previous one. Lovely scenery. There's the notice about the restricted opening times because of wanting to save water. Buckby Flight's bottom lock next door to Wilton Marina. Here we're leaving the last of the Buckby Locks and on our right hand side coming up in the photographs there is Wilton Marina quite a large marina it has a changlery a coffee shop and a brokerage selling narrowboats we moored up just near the marina entrance That's one of the boats that's for sale. There's, say, there's quite a few boats for sale here, all tightly bunched up at one end of the marina. That's the chandlery on the left and the cafes on your right hand side. Again looking down from the bottom of the Buckby flight, the last lock, zooming into where we're moored up near the marina entrance, just on the left now. This shows how close we are to the M1 motorway. Not many feet separate the canal and the M1 at this place. And the other side of Wilton Marina is a railway line, so it can be a little bit noisy if one was planning to stop the night around here. Although I dare say the traffic will die down on the motorway and there will be less trains. So we're leaving the mooring at Wilton Marina. There you can see one of the slipways where they pull out boats for survey. And there's the M1 motorway again, very close to us. We passed some very interesting boats on our way to London. Many shapes, sizes and descriptions. That's the M1 motorway again. 
But this is quite a beautiful section of the canal. Um, the, the trees do largely hide you from the sight of the traffic on the motorway. This is a bit of an odd looking boat. Somebody's kind of got a container and put it on a hull that floats. Very interesting. And there's Wurzel Gummidge and his cat and maybe a kestrel. Sometimes on the canal you find little communities of boats. This is one just as we're passing it now. Some interesting looking boats again. One, the wooden one, looked as if it belonged more on the Norfolk Broads or River Thames. And here there's quite a few boats out of the water, high up on the bank in the field. One wonders how they get there. Perhaps this crane lifts them up and transports them all the way up the field. As I turn around, one looks back up the field and there's even more boats hiding just beyond the trees. Very interesting. Passing under a new bridge here now with a notice board above the seat. I wonder what happened to the civil engineer. The trains continue to follow on our right hand side. Here we've moored up at Weedon Beck for the second night. The dogs are looking very comfortable. One's taken one of the chairs over. This morning, before we do any boating, I had a walk just a short distance away to the old Royal Ordnance Depot and its visitors centre. The Eastern Gatehouse with its portcullis is the entrance where boats once used to go into the complex from a branch leaving the Grand Union Canal. This is now a visitor centre, part funded by the Heritage Lottery. As I turn away from the entrance under the portcullis, you can see that now the branch from the Grand Union Canal no longer exists being built over by a road and houses. This was taken from inside the Eastern Gatehouse, looking down on the portcullis. And this is looking through the entrance at the side of the Eastern Gatehouse. So, once known as the Royal Ordnance Depot, the complex was built as a secure place to store equipment, ammunition, and weapons for use by the British Army. ...and artillery, or as it is collectively known, ordnance. The subsequent expansion in production meant that we needed additional secure storage space for all the ordnance and to be able to quickly resupply troops when needed. Given that all of the existing storehouses were vulnerably located on the south coast, what could be better than this site at Weedon? Slap bang in the centre of England with the Grand Junction Canal close by for transportation. Remember, this is a time before the building of the railways. The Board of Ordnance planned the building as you can still see today, plus barracks. It supplied troops fighting in the Crimean War, the Boer War, World Wars I and II. And in all that time, this same clock still kept chiming away. But let me hand you over now to my friend Arthur. My name's Arthur Hart. Access to the depot complex was strictly controlled and the work inside was kept secret. The Georgian footprint of the site with its perimeter wall, bastions, storehouses, powder magazines and gatehouses was complete by 1810. Here I'm showing you some photographs of 
the depot when it was storing weapons. Just reading the words below the photograph there, between 1837 and 1857 some of the storehouses in the south of the depot were converted into barracks. Storehouses 5 and 7 became a military prison. The depot closed in 1965. The museum is very good and I would highly recommend a visit. Having visited the museum, I walked back to the boat along the roads. It's only a short walk as I have already mentioned and we will continue our journey south along the Grand Union Canal, previously known as the Grand Junction Canal. That's just the Eastern Gatehouse again and the Visitors Centre. So back at the boat and a uh, strange insect climbing up the canopy. This is still Weed and Beck. Some modern houses here. And still passing through Weed and Beck. Just past the buildings here I would say is roughly where the, the branch went off to the right to go to the depot, the ammunition depot. Quite a few interesting boats on the bank here in various states of repair. The boatyard at Weedon Beck has a higher base so these are some higher boats we're just passing now. Very interesting names all seem to end in the word weed. As I just um, said we're, we're passing the boatyard at Weed and Beck and I'm just turning the camera around to the left there to look straight ahead and um, I think that'll be it for this video. Um, part two of our journey down to London will continue in the next film so I hope you can join us then. Thank you very much for watching this film today Please take care and stay safe and cheerio for now. Cheerio.